are you, Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. You are Abba, and we worship you. You are Abba, God, and we worship you. Come on, come on, lift up your praise. Hallelujah. That same excitement that you had five minutes ago, go ahead and shift it and give God glory. Give him praise with the same volume you had. Come on and tell the Lord he's worthy. Oh, Lord, we thank you. We bless your name. We will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in our mouths, be in our hearts, be in our church, God. We bless your name, God. Be thou exalted in this place. Yes, God, I will bless the Lord. Thank you, God. Hey, will you bless the Lord with me this morning? Come on, come on, come on, clap right here. Hey, thank you, thank you. giving him the highest praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift your voices in the sanctuary. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey. One more time. Hallelujah. 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 Help me. I will Come on and bless him. Come on, come on. where you are. Hey. Come on, come on. Come on. Come on and praise his name. Hey. Come on and bless We serve a good God. Give him praise. Come on, come on. Come on, come on. Hey, enter come into on, his gate. One more time. Come on and bless his name. Come on, come on and bless him. Come on and praise his name. Come on, come on. One more time. I will bless the Lord. Yet the highest praise. Hallelujah. Hey. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, shout unto the Lord with a voice of triumph. Hallelujah. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Hallelujah. Anybody free? Anybody free? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I believe I need to. 
to challenge you. Hallelujah. Let me hear you say hallelujah. Hey. Hallelujah. Come on. Just look at your neighbor if they're not saying it. Just look at them and say hallelujah. All right, all right. Hallelujah. Come on. We've got to all give the Lord praise in this place. Because we know how good God has been. And if he doesn't do another thing, he's already done more than enough. But because he is a good God, El Shaddai, the God who's more than enough, he's going to keep doing exceeding and abundantly above all we can ask or think. Hey! According to the power that's out at work within us. Hey, all you got to do is say hallelujah. the glory and the honor hallelujah all right your turn said i can't stop praising can't stop praising can't stop dancing can't stop dancing you've been too good lord you've been too good Say, hallelujah your turn hallelujah. said i can't stop praising i can't stop dancing you've been too good lord hallelujah say it again like you mean it said i can't stop praising i can't stop dancing some of y'all just looking at me dance I need you to get your feet up off the ground and give God some praise this morning. Even if you just got to walk in place. That's all right. You don't need a whole lot of rhythm. You just got to move. Ha! Let everything that has breath, let everything that has movement, praise you the Lord. Are you ready? Are you ready? Said I can't stop praising. I can't stop dancing. Said you've been too good, Lord. Is that true for you? Said I can't stop praising. Said I can't stop dancing. So you've been too good, Lord. Hey, hallelujah. Hey, just think about that. Can't stop praising. Said I can't stop dancing. Hey, so you've been too good, Lord. Hallelujah. Hey, said I can't stop praising. Can't stop praising. I can't stop dancing. Can't stop dancing. You've been too good, Lord. Too good, Lord. Hallelujah. hallelujah. Somebody give God praise. That's if he's been good to you. Somebody give God praise. Where did my time go? Hey. Oh, say, Lord, you're worthy. Lord, you're worthy. You're so worthy. You're so worthy. Lord, you're worthy. Lord, you're worthy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say, Lord, you're worthy. Lord, you're worthy. Yes, you're worthy. Yes, you're worthy. You're so worthy. You're so worthy. Oh, say, Lord, you're holy.
for showing mercy. Hallelujah.
you for the blood. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The blood that covers us. Hallelujah. That saves us. That heals us. That fills us. My God. Hallelujah. Lord, we give you praise today. Hallelujah. Oh, we bless your name. stop praising, can't stop dancing. Hallelujah. You're so worthy.
know the Lord's been good to you. Only you know what God has done for you. Only you know the danger seen and unseen. Hallelujah. Come on now. Hallelujah. He's been faithful to us. He's been faithful to us. He's been faithful to us. When the devil meant for us to go down, we went higher. Hallelujah. When the devil issued us a death sentence, we rose up higher. God, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. Hallelujah. For every mountain, every impossibility, you made it possible, God. We thank you, Lord God, for every hard thing, you made it easy. You made it a sweatless victory. We thank you, Father. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to your name. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Father. We can't thank you enough. We cannot thank you enough, but we sure will try. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, God, I thank you. Hinamahasi, you've been so good to us. If you only knew, if you only knew the dangers he snatched you from, if you only knew what could have happened, had it happened, you would not be able to be contained. You, you would not be able to muzzle your mouth. Hallelujah. What almost happened, but didn't happen. God, I thank you. I thank you. I th to us, God. You've been keeping us and keeping us and keeping us and keeping us and keeping us, God. We thank you. We thank you, Father. We thank you. Hallelujah. 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 We thank you for your grace. Thank you for your grace that stepped in and went beyond what we could do. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy, God, for your mercy protected us and kept us from getting what we should have gotten. We thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your mercy, Father. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your mercy, God. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. And God, we take this moment to remember what you did for us. When you first said that you so loved us, that you gave your only begotten son, we thank you for the life of Jesus. And as we prepare for communion, Hallelujah. We dare not take this as a regular thing that we do. This is not normal. This is not form or fashion. But this is our opportunity to truly remember, to truly be thankful for your goodness. Thank you for your blessings. Thank you for the blood. Thank you for your body. Thank you for how it was broken. Thank you for every single stripe. 
that you received on your back. It was for my deliverance. It was for my healing. Healing, healing, healing. Healing from sickness. Healing from disease. We thank you, 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 we thank you. Hallelujah. The chastisement of our peace was upon you. And we thank you that by every stripe we're healed. Thank you that you were wounded for our transgressions. Hallelujah. And we thank you, Lord God, that the curse that we should have received, that we didn't receive because cursed is he who hangeth on the tree. We thank you, God. We thank you for Jesus. We thank you. Hallelujah. 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 And as we begin to partake, Father, of the representation of your body and your blood, we shall never, we shall never forget. And so God, make these ordinary wafers and this ordinary portion of juice make it supernatural that it will truly touch the gratitude of our hearts and exemplify the true remembrance of that very day when your body was broken when the thrones, the crown of thorns were thrusted upon your head and the blood came streaming down, transfigure these sacraments, these elements in the name of Jesus. That truly as we begin to partake of them, God, the supernatural will happen just as the supernatural happened on that very day. We thank you, God, in the name of Jesus, blessings upon these sacraments that as we partake healing will be manifested deliverance will be manifested freedom will reign in this place in Jesus name blessed in Jesus name and we thank you amen please follow the directions of the ushers as you come to partake. Hallelujah.
show forth me your tender mercy, your tender mercy. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. And as we take of this element, a representation of your body. your back on your own son so that he could pay the price for every sin for every heartache for every pain for every single thing that we would ever have had to endure in our bodies we thank you we thank you and as we partake we receive what we already have, our healing, our deliverance. Hallelujah in Jesus' name. In remembrance, God, thank you for the healing. He who began a good work is completing it in the name of Jesus. We thank you for the healing for those who have gone through surgeries that are on the recovery. He's finishing and completing the good work that what the natural physician could not do, now the supernatural physician has stepped in and he's making everything complete. He's making everything whole. Hallelujah, we thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your body. And we thank you, Father. For the blood that you allowed to come streaming down, we thank you that, that even Jesus knew that he had to fulfill his assignment, that he couldn't allow the blood to stop. He could have even called the angels to come to his beckoning call to cease everything. But I thank you that he didn't because the blood came streaming down and it came streaming down to my sins to my inconsistency, to my lack, to my shame. I thank you for the blood in the name of Jesus. And we take it, and we take it, and we take it and receive everything that the blood has ever meant for us. In Jesus' name. And we thank you, Father. We thank you that it's complete, that it's finished, that it's irrevocable, that it cannot be overchanged, overturned, or switched out. We thank you for the blood that still has power and is just as potent as it was back then when it was first streaming out of Emmanuel's vein. We thank you. Thank you for the blood. And we receive the full benefit package that comes from the blood of Jesus. In Jesus' name. 
Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, but you can you can be seated. Let's turn in our Bibles to Exodus chapter 16. We have so much to be thankful for. Has God been good to anybody besides me? I'm just, you know, um, you know, people in my position get criticized a lot. And some would say, oh, you blessed. What about, every, what, what, what about the people that follow you? I just want to, I just want to, I just, I just earnestly, you, you know what I mean? Um, I am grateful and thankful to God that uh, is working. Working for me, working for you, working for whoever will, you know, connect. You know what I mean? That's, that is, um, because some people really believe that this, some people believe this is, you know, this th it, it really don't work. The only one that's being enriched is the leader. And they don't realize that so many people are coming out of debt, man. Things are happening on a profound level for the people of God. And that is the evidence that this thing is real. 
and I'm grateful. I am so grateful to God. The truth of the matter is, I knew God was going to do some things, but not all of this. And the, and the thing that's somewhat uh, still concerning for me is I realize we're just getting started. Where in the world is this thing going to end up? Hallelujah. Glory to God. So we're in Exodus uh, chapter 16. I want to share some things um, uh, on today. Uh, you know, and I'm thankful to God. God knows exactly what to do to get us where he wants us to be. And sometimes you're going through some things and you think they're hard, um, but those things God will use to prepare you for where you're going. Let me, let me read the text before I get ahead of myself. We're in Exodus, you're in Exodus chapter 16. And they took their journey from Elam and all the congregation of the children of Israel came unto the wilderness of sin, which is between Elam and Sinai on the 15th day of the second month after their departing out of the land of Egypt. And the whole congregation, now, I want you to, why would they even give specific dates and times? Now, they're letting you know that they left Egypt, but it seems that at, at this time, they be, I believe when they first left, everybody was happy. Come on, y'all work with the preacher a little bit. Y'all follow what I'm saying? It's a reason why they're telling us and giving us a specific time, specific date, and a location of where they were when they began to murmur. You know, because everybody get, oh my God, we, you know, this is great, but I want to forewarn you that when God begins to uh, bring us out or deliver us, you know, we're excited because it, what happens, we tend to blame everybody else for why we were there. But then God, at a certain point, he'll come around and, and start dealing with you and let you know some stuff that was in you that was holding you back. Oh, man, anybody know what I'm talking about? How God will begin to show you you, and he doesn't do it initially, and you think, you know, you, you, you're pretty good. Then as you go along, the Lord begins to show you your weaknesses and the very things in you that are holding you back. Um, now, it depends on where you're going, which will determine how much you, uh, you're going to have to change. They were going from Egypt to the promised land. Y'all follow? I'm, I'm a, a land flowing with milk and honey. Everybody understand what I'm saying? So they, they're not going to a regular place. They are going from extreme poverty and slavery to being rich. Now, that's a major transition. Uh, and the Lord knew it. The Lord knew. I'm going to bring them out, but before I can bring them in, oh, God, here we go. I want them to enjoy where I'm going to take them. I don't want them to have everything and still believe that they are in lack. No. I don't know if you heard what I just said. There's some things in you that are going to have to change so that you can enjoy the good life. I'm going to tell you something, one thing you're going to have to kick out right now, thinking when I get to heaven, then I'm going to have peace, and then everything's going to be fine. No, it's going to be fine right now. It's and, then, and then when I get to heaven, that's going to be wonderful because the Bible says, whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. But the enemy will tell you that. He'll, he'll, he'll let you think that the only time I'm going to really be happy, really be at peace, really know it's going to be fine is when I get to heaven. So he'll, he, he want you to believe the lie that I'm going to have to go through hell down here, and the only way I'm going to have peace is when I get to heaven. But, but that's a lie. It is, um, God knew I'm taking them 
they're going to have to change. All they've known is what somebody told them. They didn't initiate anything. They didn't, they didn't, they didn't come up with their own blueprint. They are building somebody else's house. When are you going to build your own? See, it's, and, and he has to try to work with them to get them in a place where they can handle being in charge. He, he, he's, he, he's trying to propound. Now, the thing you have to understand, it's too late to get ready for the promised land when you arrive. Mm -hmm. So what God will do, now I, I want you to pay close attention. When they were in Egypt, he said little to them in the area of preparation. It wasn't until they left Egypt that God said, now you're going to change. Now I, 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 uh, I bought you out rich. Uh, 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 I told you to borrow of your neighbor, so you, you, you've been enriched. None of y'all are sick. Not one feeble person among them. Y'all follow what I'm saying? Bought them all out. And, uh, but, but notice he didn't say anything to them about their mindset changing until they left. Oh, my God. And, and, and it's amazing because God, it, it, it's... it's is something, you know, when the Lord said to Abram, get out of your country from your father's house to a place that I will show you. Remember, remember, re why, did, why did Abram have to come out from what he was familiar with in order to receive what God had for him? It was something about their old environment, how do I say it, God, that has it... It's something about that old environment that kept you in bondage. It's certain triggers, it's certain smells, it's certain sights that if you are around it, it will remind you and be something that can pull you right back in. So God says, if I'm going to really deliver them, I need to get them out. And now I'm watching, I'm going to show them a new way. I'm going to show them a new way. The way that they used to struggle in order to make ends meet, I want them to forget it because they'll never have to live that way again. Now, I'm, I'm, let, me, let me show you right here in the scripture. In verse number three, and the children of Israel said unto them, uh, Would to God we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt when we sat by the flesh pots and when we did eat bread to the full, for ye have brought us forth into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Then said the Lord unto Moses, Behold, I will rain down bread from heaven for you, and the people shall go out and gather a certain rate every day, that I may prove you whether they may walk in my law or no. And it shall come come to pass that on the sixth day they shall, uh, uh, they shall prepare that which they bring in and it shall be twice as much as they gather daily. And Moses and Aaron said unto all the children of Israel at evening, then, then ye shall know that the Lord hath brought you out from the land of Egypt. And in the morning ye shall see the glory of the Lord, for that he hear your murmurings against the Lord, and what are we that you murmur against us? Wow. Now, I read that to show you they were thinking about how they were fed in Egypt. They were thinking about the flesh pots that they ate from. Now, in Egypt, they were telling them, what you going to eat, what time you eat, they were, they were enslaved. But now God is going to do it another way. Matter of fact, he's going to send something they never saw before called manna. If you keep expecting God to provide for you the old way, you will never experience the new way that God is going to take care of you. You're going to go from renting to owning 
from, from, uh, and, and it's a process. You'll be in that house, and soon you will have the deed. One day, you're going to be able to put your key in that lock, click, click, and you're going to know it's yours. Don't nobody own this, no bank. The deed is in your safe. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. It's now, he didn't train them until he got them out of Egypt. He had to get them from that location, get them from the familiar, get them away from what enslaved them. That's why I don't want to upset you. It's, it's, it. When you know you're in bondage and you need to come out, when you know you're in bondage and you need to come out, there are different vices that the devil used, and some of them have the title of a so-called friend. I'm going to try to walk through it. They, they love where they are. They don't see it as bondage. They love where they are. You trying to move out and the devil will use them to discourage you. What you going over there for? Why you taking that class? Why you trying, why, why you reading that book? What, what are you trying to do? So what they would do is discourage, see, it's the familiar. That's why Abram, get from your, get, get, I need you to get out of here. Leave your father. Leave your kindred. Leave kindred. Leave, oh my God. Leave, oh my God. I need you to leave where you come. You can't go to the new place till you leave where you came from. You're going to have to leave the old way of thinking, the old way that God took care of you. It's going to be different now. Now you're going to have to prepare yourself for the new. Um, a lot of times we didn't really get what we wanted. We got what we could afford. Well, this is where I am. This is about, about the best I can do, so this is what I'm going to do. But those, oh, my God. Um, I don't want to take you too fast here. The, the, they were thinking about the way they were provided for with those flesh pots. But then God said, no, you, I need to get you out of that. You're not in Egypt anymore. When you were in Egypt, this is the time, oh Lord, this is the time that you had your meals and this was your menu. But I'm, I'm, I'm taking you from that and I'm preparing you for the new place. You, oh my God, I have something to... I, God is so smart. God refused. Now, I'm, I'm going to walk with me now. God, God did not even give them the same diet they had in Egypt. Now, that's deeper than what you think. Because that's a vice that will remind me of where I come from. If you keep giving me, oh, that remind that that is a reminder that 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 makes oh I I, re, I remember uh, you don't you the more God can take you from what used to be to the new the better off you gonna be. It's certain. I know what poverty smell like. I know what them demon spirits smell like. And anything that the enemy can do to remind you of your slavery, he'll do it. Anything he can do. Now, 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 okay, Lord, now, in Egypt, everything was scheduled for you. In the wilderness, you're going to have to trust God. That's the thing that makes it somewhat frightening is I don't know where it's going to come from because I've never been here before. 
And the enemy will try to use the fact that I don't know, I haven't been here to make you fear and to make you afraid to even, to, you know, to go forward. I've been around apostle, I hear him, he keep telling me, I tell him, you know, well, we accomplished this, we got this done. And then he would say, it's so much more. Oh, excuse me. It's always more. It's always more. It's always more. Somebody gonna get it. You, it, you follow me? It, it's always. It's always. But if you settle, if you settle. See, in Egypt, they determine what time you ate, what you ate, and how much you ate. They are the ones to put a ceiling on your potential. Oh, man. Um, it, it, um, so I, I, want you to, I want you to see the fact that he didn't begin. He got them out of Egypt. But then God knew, now I'm going to have to get Egypt out of them. Notice he didn't try to get Egypt out of them while they were still in Egypt. But once they left, that, that, remember he gave us the date, gave us a time. Uh, it, come on, y'all. y'all. It gave us the location of where they were when they began to murmur and complain. They didn't start murmuring when they first left. They thought they were good to go. Watch this. Oh, my God. They thought it's going to be easy. Few days journey, we'll be right in the promised land. You know why it took them 40 years? Because God said, you will not go in there slave when you are owner. You're not going in there with that jacked up mentality of being a slave when I have provided for you to be. Oh, man. He wouldn't even let them go in. He said, you're not going in there. I have all this is yours. I have houses you didn't build, vineyards you didn't plant. I have, I have water. I have waterfront property. I have hills. I got valleys. I got, I got, I got, I got, man, the most precious fruit you ever saw. But I will not let you go in there with this old mentality, this so is it possible that it's not God holding me up? Wow. Is this 1130 service? Yeah. It's not God holding me up. It's something in me that loves the mediocre, that loves the average, that, that matter of fact, when you start trying to excel, it'll always be somebody around you. Oh, so you, you think you're better than us. Oh, oh, it don't take all of that. Oh, what, what are you trying to do? I tell you what I'm trying to do. Well, I take, I take that back. I'm not going to try. I'm going to the top. My intention is to go all the way with God and give him the glory for what he put in me. I don't need nobody to try to shut me down when God has, he put some things in me. He put some things in me and I want to go for, I want to dream. Why can't I, why can't I dream? Why can't? I was over the other day, I received your seat. I was over the other day at um, Elder Wesley's uh, property, Elder, the elders. Nicholas property and um, I received and I almost tears almost came in my eyes man I said oh my god I, man do you dream do, 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 do you know where they came from and God would arrange things in such a way to put you in the same neighborhood with your leader. Watch it. Allow you to dream up a plan, a blueprint. This is what I want. Allow you to build it, to see it being built. 
with nobody telling you, well, no, you know you've been to jail. You can't do this. That's a lie. Y'all ain't hear what I said. I received. Did anybody hear what I just said? Because it doesn't matter what your past has been. Oh, my God. If you hook up with Almighty God, he'll do some extraordinary things. Hallelujah. Try to shut people down, man. No, I can dream. I can dream. I can dream. I can dream. Some things that God put in me in my mother's womb. Some things may have got contaminated along the way. But what God intended for me to be, that's what I'm going to be. Mm. Hallelujah. So... I may get in trouble a little bit, but in Egypt, they were in slavery. They were receiving a handout. It seemed like it was easy, but a handout is really, is really limiting in a way. Now, now, there's different people on different levels, so sometimes you got to do something for a season, for, but, but, but eventually, oh God, you got to see yourself on it. Now, once they got out of Egypt, once they got out of there, the Lord began to start dealing with them because it was some changes. Let, let me read verse 2. And the whole congregation of the children of Israel murmured against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. Now, We all have had parents that tell us to do something we didn't want to do it. You know, you're doing something else, and then they say, well, I need you to go do this. And um, you have to, I receive your seat. You, you, you move, you move and do, but it's kind of, it may work on your nerves a little bit. Come on, let's get real. I, I, really, I really didn't want to do that, but I, but I know I, if I'm going to stay up in this house, I got to... When something needs to change in you that you have fallen in love with all your life, it's not going to be easy for that to be ripped out of you. What you depended on, you've been, it's, it's become a part of you. Oh, it has, it has wrapped itself around your anointing and uh, is suffocating with the real you. And only God, through specialized surgery, as you lay prostrate before him, will he be able to start removing. Oh, my God. You, oh, my God. Sometimes it's something that you think is helping you. That's the very thing that's keeping you from your full potential. Hallelujah. They're they on their way to the promised land. But God decided you cannot go in until you change. I don't care how long it takes you, six months, a year. Y'all going to change? Oh, y'all, oh, oh, you hard-headed? Five years? Do you realize they went around the wilderness 40 years? And God allowed a, another generation to die off, and then he let their children have what they say they won't going to have. Um, let me, let me, let me try to, let me, let me try, um, what I have seen and, and, and what I'm trying to preach to you today is not just something I read in the Bible. I have, ex listen, you're looking at a debt free man. Are, are you listening to me? I know the mentality I used to have. I know the mentality I have now. Um, I'm going to try to slow it down enough to try to get something to you. God began to train me for today 
when I was coming out. When God knows he has a pupil that's going to pay attention, he'll start feeding you stuff, not for your present because you ain't staying here. That anointing is so strong, it has no respect for where you are. That anointing is you are going to the promised land. And you have to be careful that you don't allow the wilderness, which is the route on the way, to disturb you. Don't let nothing in the wilderness upset you because I'm not going to be here no way. This is only what I have to pass through in order for me to get where I got to go. Now, let me, let me help you. Let me help you. Thank you, Holy Ghost. It's, it's a lot of crazy stuff in the wilderness. But God will use the wilderness, you still listening? To train you for where you're going. It's certain tests that you will have to pass in the wilderness in order for God to allow you to go into the promised land. The promised land, that's where all the blessings are. That's the, the, when you get to the promised land, you won't be saying, I need a breakthrough. Everything has broke through. You know, it's no lack. Uh, I mean, I mean, every, a land flowing, flowing, flowing in milk and honey. Uh, I'm, um, not intermittent blessing. Get a blessing over here, go four, five more months, and I get, finally get another blessing. It just, you just bless. It's just like Christmas is just all year. You know what I mean? Just, just, um, it's certain things I have found limiting my growth, a lie from the past, if I don't release that lie, that same lie has hindered me all these years and will continue to hinder me unless I release it. It is, I'm, I'm, I'm going to give you something here. Um, have you noticed Satan always try to have something as a vice he can use in your life to try to tame your anointing. He want, he want to have something going on with your children, something going on with your body, something going on, just anything he can do to try to, you, oh my God, the Bible, what, what we just had communion today, what Jesus did on that cross set me free, brother. And now that set me free. That, 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 that is not going to set me free. It, it set, it set me free. I can be free in my mind, free in my body. I can have liberty. I can have liberty. I'm not like, I'm not like, I'm not like the young man that was in the grave and, and, uh, and Jesus had to call, uh, 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 what, what was his name? Lazarus? No, no, no. Notice he's had loose him. He ain't no good bound. It's no good for me to be alive and bound. You're going to have to make up your mind today. If I'm going to be free, I'm going to be free. I'm going to be free in my mind, my body. I'm... No, I'm not going to go around. I'm, 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 I'm. See, see that, that's, another, that's another thing. See, Oh, Lord, in slavery, it, 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 the mentality, I got to depend on somebody. I, I hope this go right. I'm wondering if this will go right. In the promised land, it's no issue with money. Whatever it costs, you don't have to be, uh, have your stomach and not. I wonder how much it costs. It don't matter. It, just fix it. We'll talk later about it. Just, 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 just. just. Many of us for a long time, I'm, I'm going to share something with you now because I've come through it. We've been tormented in the area of our minds as it pertaining to finances for so long. It's, it's hard for you to turn the switch and realize I'm free. That's over for good. 
you'll come out and the devil will say, well, it ain't going to last. No, no, you, it's something in you that you got to turn, you got to flip that thing and say, oh, no, I'm free. Whom the Son has set free is free indeed. I am show free indeed. I'm going to give you another interpretation. I'm sure enough free. I'm another term. I'm absolutely free. Hallelujah. I am, it's no doubt about it. I, I have made it in this area. I'm not, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God. It's a freedom, man. It's an it's, it's a, it's a awesome freedom when you don't have to be considering and worried about any, whatever. You know what, something, something will go, you're like, Lord, I got to try to figure this out because I don't want, I don't want to, and then when you can look at it and say, well, let me try to figure it out, but if I need to call somebody, you know, when, you, when you're the owner, you put your hands in your pocket, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. open your front door, yes, and just look around. <laughs> Hallelujah. Y'all follow what I'm saying? I'm, uh, th th this is where the Lord want to take you, where it, it, and, and it has something to do with your faith. You get to a place where I, look, man, I'm, I'm in charge. I'm going to help you with the Bible. Whatever I call it, that's what it's going to be. If I curse it, it's going to be cursed. Y'all remember the man? They told him, they said, go up on, go, go, to try to get the man of God. He said, go up there. I need you to curse those people over there. And then he went up there and he blessed them. He said, but didn't I tell you to curse them? Why did you bless them? He said, I, 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 I couldn't help it. I got up there. I tried to do what you told me, but I couldn't do it. Do you know what, what else? When God has blessed something, it can't be cursed. Do you realize you can have a committee arrayed against you? Do you realize you can have the greatest witches in this region to put whatever forward and it can't touch you? When you bless, you just bless. When, 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 when that glory is on you, when the mark of God is on you, it's just on you. When you're blessed, when God has said you're blessed, you're blessed. It ain't nothing, it don't have nothing to do with what color you are. My God, it ain't about color, color it's about covenant. Glory to God. So... So these, these, um, you be seated. These, so they, 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 um, um, he, but he, he wouldn't let them, I want y'all to see that. He would not let them go into the promised land. And then let's relate that to your life. It's, it's a certain level of blessing God won't let you go to until you learn the lesson. You can't be, you can't be messing around with this thing. You can't be one moment you believe it, next moment you don't. You got to know. Point your finger at that house and you tell it you paid for. Do you hear me? I ain't playing with you. I, my God, I come again. Oh, no, you are paid for in full, in full. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hmm. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Glory to God. Debt free living. Y'all y'all ready for it? You're gonna live. All right. Did y'all hear what I what, what I just say? What, tell me what I just said. I just heard something, but you know, when I said that. Oh, I'm about ready to tell you something now. Houses they didn't build. Vineyards they didn't plant. What is that? Debt free living. Come on, y'all. <laughs> Come on, man. They want no mortgage, no notes. Houses they didn't build, vineyards they didn't plant. Grant big grapes. They inherited it because their father said, this is your reward. Hallelujah. Don't that sound like death free to you? Houses they didn't build, vineyards they didn't plant. Do you know, do you know, do you know, I receive. Do you know 
you can move into a home or etc. And then tell God, Lord, I received this house. God cannot give you a house with a note. Come on now, come on, let's just get real. Come on, we're talking about Almighty God, y'all. Why would God give you this and now you got... All right, let me break it down for you. How could God give you a house that the bank owns? Come on, come on, come on. Now, God doesn't do anything halfway. He's not going to have somebody in between you and the ownership. He didn't intend for the bank to be on the contract. He intended for it to be an exchange between himself and you. So when you signed that contract, you said, God, I receive. And you need to know we're going to get this other person off this contract. We're going to get them off this contract. My God. My God, now, 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 now. When you start thinking like this, some religious folk, maybe even in your family, will call you, you know, they, ah, oh, see, see, y'all, y'all, I'm supposed to be an owner. Houses we didn't build, vineyards we didn't plant. God decided I can't come out of Egypt broke because I'm rich. Borrow of your neighbors, silver and gold and jewelry, etc., raiment, clothing. And then God healed everybody's body. He said, Because, because y'all are under me, you got to be right. Oh man. My goodness. Mount Gilead, the note-burning church. Man. Glory to God. My God. So, it's, it's a difference. So, over in verse 3, in Exodus 16, it's, it's a different. And, and when you are expecting God to care for you the way he used to care for you, you will miss the new way that God wants to care for you. Now, I said earlier in the message, the thing that makes it difficult and, 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 and fear can try to come on you is that I don't know how he's going to do it and I'm going to have to depend on him. Give us this day... Our daily bread. Somebody help me now. Now, now remember on when 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 uh uh um let me let me read this scripture so you'll understand. Hallelujah. Now in verse number um, verse number four, then said the Lord unto Moses, uh, behold, I will rain down bread from heaven for you, and the people shall go out and gather a certain rate when Every day that I may prove them whether they be, uh, whether, whether they will walk in my law or no. Verse 5, and it shall come to pass that on the sixth day they shall prepare that which they bring in, and it shall be twice as much as they gather daily. Now, they, they're dealing with the Sabbath now. So, the Lord, I don't want y'all to go out on the Sabbath and gather, so gather twice as much a day before. But notice how much he rained down daily. Just enough for that day. Mm -hmm. So you're not in Egypt now. God says, I'm going to give you exactly what you need every day. I don't want you to look to man no more. I want you to start looking to me. I'm going to give you what you need. I'm not going to give you more than what you need. I'm going to give you only what you need for that day. For that day. For that day. That's where that comes from. Give us this day. Mm. 
Man, let me, let me see how do I say this. In Egypt, it seemed like they were blessing you, but they were limiting you all the time. But now God is preparing them for where they're going. God said, I got you. I'm going to take care of you. I'm a, matter of fact, when you were in Egypt, before they scoped out the promised land, do y'all know the first people? Okay, let me go back. Let's take a little quiz. You know, Joshua and Caleb and them boys went over to search out the land, but somebody went before them. Can somebody tell me who it was? Somebody went and found the promised land before they ever knew it was a promised land. Y'all follow me? It was God. While they were in slavery building somebody else's house, God says, I'm going to find you a house. Oh, so y'all, y'all, uh, I don't want to lose you, but God will do stuff like that. While you sweating and building somebody else's stuff, God will be on the other side looking for your home. They're in slavery. And because God is omniscient, omnipresent, you can be in more than one place. He said, I'm going to watch over you, but I'm, I got to go. I'm here and there. Wow. I'm going to go find you. Let me find you some lakefront property. Let me find you some mountains. And let, let, me, let, me, let me make sure the land that you're going to really produce. I'm going to make sure the soil is rich. That whatever you plant, it'll come up. My God. So I want you to think about this for a moment. God was the one. You know, you got, you, you got, oh, you're you going to be from around some of your family members this week, so. And some of them, they just don't understand. I don't, I don't know about that prosperity. Well, why would God? Go find, he could have found any type of land. <laughs> why did God go find the promised land and say, that's why I want y'all to go? Y'all, 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 you get it? I thought about something in between services. If, if, and then I want you to, I want you to be, um, when you were apart real, real close in with your family, and around them all the time, you didn't know what was holding them back until you left. And now when you all have gatherings like on Thursday, you begin to watch them and listen, and you say, I see why you in bondage. Because I'm, I'm, I'm hearing, I'm hearing the way you, the way you think, but you couldn't see when you were a part of it. Anybody understand what I'm saying? But once you left and you were able to get free, now you can go back and say, oh my God, this is what's holding, these are the same demons that held me back. And I, I didn't even see it until I left. Am I making sense? Am I... Now, I'm going to tell you something about that. When you in that type of mess and you think you okay, you're not trying to get free. When you know I'm in bondage, you will try to fight your way out of it. Well, let me give you this as well. Some of them know they're in bondage, but they don't know that there is a greater power and that's where you come in. God because they'll say it can't be done. So God will take somebody just like them <laughs> and bring them out and then send them back as a mirror wow. and say, look in the mirror. Wow. Now they have no excuse. Talking about it can't be done because somebody just like you did it. So now you can't live that lie no more. That's why your deliverance is so important. Yes, 
You better not put that new car. Oh, I don't want to go down there with the new automobile. I don't want them to talk about me. You better, and you, and you do not go to Thanksgiving dinner. You dress yourself up. Put on something reasonable. Put on something, uh, uh, and make sure all your children look right. And you go up in there and you clean that car. I don't care what you got. You go up because you represent the kingdom. They want to know how well you're doing. Show them. They need to see when you walk up in there, they're like, oh, God. They're going to look at everything. They're going to look at you all up and down. They're going to look at all your children. They're going to try to find something. And if they're coming to your house, Maybe if you didn't prepare this year, maybe if you don't have time to make the adjustment. You, you know, when people, when, when my family come, I don't ask nobody to bring nothing. I say, just bring yourself. Have over and above. You want to take something home, we got plenty. Make you a plate. Get some aluminum for plastic wrap, aluminum for whatever you need. It ain't no lack up in here. Glory to God. And if you got praise and worship music flowing through your house, keep it on. We're not changing nothing because you're all up in here. This is what we do. And we're not going to let you disrespect this holy ground. You want to smoke, you want to drink, go down the street somewhere. You ain't going to do it up in here. Hallelujah. I receive. That's the way you got to be. You can't be messing around. And now, oh, now you, now, oh so you're going to hide it now. Well, I don't, I don't want to really take the new one. They're already talking about me. So God going to get you. You're going to be going down the road. God said, why did I give you that? Now, I'm, I'm going to share something with you, but just crazy. Now, this is, this is just, this is, this is, this is ignorance gone to siege. I remember we got a Lincoln, had the Hyundai. So I'm praying. I'm going to go out and pray. I'm going to pray. I'm praying on Sunday morning. And I'm like, I don't want to take the Lincoln because it may mess up my prayer. I'm trying to pray. I'm trying to focus on the Lord. I'm trying to, and I, I'm going out there. I bet the Lord says, stupid, 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 stupid. You just don't realize I have given you this. And uh, see, I didn't know I had that prosperity anointing on me. I didn't know I would be in a Maserati now. Wow. Now, if you, can't, if you can't handle a Lincoln, oh, is anybody catching what I'm saying? Are you following what I'm saying? So I'm thinking it's going to mess up my anointing, and God said what it's going to do is awaken it. Because not only will you have a Lincoln, you're going to... See, I didn't know that I was going to go to a Cadillac, then a Mercedes, 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 then a Maserati. How many Mercedes in there? About four or five? Don't get nervous. You, you know, so I'm thinking, well, you know, it's going to affect. I need to focus on this. I, and then say I was doing another thing. It was a certain neighborhood that I moved into eventually. I would go in that neighborhood. I'd be praying, praying. And then, and then the Lord would bring me out to prayer. And I look at the house, and then I put my head down. I got to keep praying. I can't, I can't, I can't. And then I, I just, I finally said, Lord, when I'm in my 50s, maybe you'll give me something like that. And that, what I was looking at, we could put in our house right now about five or six times, maybe seven. Are you following what I'm saying? It's just, it's, it's, listen, man, I'm going to tell you. I think about Abram sometime, and I think about, you got to be very careful who you associate with all the way around. Many places I would be, I wouldn't have nobody to go to lunch with. And I was like, man, I ain't got, I ain't got to holler no friend. It was the best thing that ever happened for me. Yeah. That I didn't have a whole bunch of, you know, friends, friend, oh, friendship. <laughs> oh, Lord. It, you, you know what I mean? That, you know, whatever they traveling on, friendship. Ship, ship, ship. Whatever they traveling on, I'm up, we, we with them. You, you, it, it's, it's amazing it, because people have spirits. And so, can I be honest with y'all? Most people, they're going to be, they I right with you. But when you start leaving them, those, oh God, I'm about ready to tell you something now. Those spirits that are holding them back 
when they start hating on you, but they are doing it in a way where they, where they want you to think they still for you. But those same spirits holding them back will try to, they are trying to release them on you. Yo, yo, I'm not. Uh, let, me, let me take more time here because some of y'all, y'all like, huh, what is this? When somebody starts hating on you, it's the hate side of them, not the godly side of them, that will be released. So whatever demon powers are holding them back, when they start hating on you, they'll start releasing the evil that's in them. So the same evil that's been trying to hold them back will try to attack you. Oh, my God. When you fellowship, fellow, fellow, fellowship, when you sit down and dine together, you are sharing the table. Oh, my God. And when they are not promoting you out of love, but they are jealous of you. Let me deal with that right now. When they are really jealous of you, but they are telling you they're proud of you. But you better have a discerning spirit. Amen. Have you ever been around somebody and you catch them um, and just for a glimpse, God will show you they're not with you. They, they hide it the whole time, but when they didn't think you were looking, you caught their face, and then they tried to shift it real fast. Come on, two people in the back. Anybody ever? Anybody know what I'm talking about? The evil inside them, that's what's going to try to attack you. The evil, the evil that's inside them, that's the thing because they are hating on you. What are they going to do? How can they get back at you? So they really are releasing through their words whatever's holding them back, the bondage. See, but see, when you're in fellowship, now you're sitting there talking to them and they're speaking to you. That's why you got to be careful. Even over the phone, you got to, I got to go. Click. Sometimes, now watch it now. Sometimes you begin to hold up. They got ready to say something evil. I need to get out of here. I don't need to hear that because if I don't hear it, I won't have to deal with it later. Have you ever been there? You start discerning. I need to get off this phone. The Holy Ghost will just nudge you a little bit. Get off the phone. Get off the phone. Get off the phone. So it's not about, well, I don't want to disrespect them. Or I don't, no, I got to save my soul right here now. I cannot, I cannot allow my soul to become damaged with their words. So what happens, you find out your real friends when you start climbing. And those who are okay with your climb are your real friends. My mama told me like this. She said, friends are a dime a dozen. Interpretation, very few. Very few. There's some crazy folk out here. And it's getting crazier and crazier. So the best thing I ever did was get alone. I don't have no problem. I go to the restaurant by myself, sit down. It's, it's just you. Yep, it's just me. Take me to my seat. I go to the movies by myself. I, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, man, I'm okay in my own skin. I don't have no, have no crowd around. I, I, I want to go. No, I, I can't go. I said, can you go with me? Now you got to consider who you asked to go with. Did y'all catch that? Watch the words now. Can you go with me? Are you with me? Do you really, do you really have my best interest at hand? That's why friends are only a dime a dozen. A real, a real friend are going to battle for you. Uh-huh. 
And so what God will do when you start really following him, now I'll tell you something, when, when something don't mean you good and you don't know it, God will make it, he'll make it, he'll make them expose themselves. They are, they are, they are fake for so long and then they'll leave something unturned so God could just show you just for a glimpse. They ain't for you. Leave them alone. Oh, what did I just say? Leave them alone and go for yourself. Y'all follow what I'm saying? You, you got to do that sometime because some of us, our problem, y'all give me a moment. Some of us, our problem, you always try to take somebody with you. Well, all that I'm learning, I want them to learn it too. And so you always try to take somebody with you. And what you're doing, you need to go and get totally free. Then you can come back and try to snatch somebody else out. Your problem is you always try to take somebody with you. Do you realize that your deliverance will be different from their deliverance. And there's some things you're going to have to do alone. John the Baptist had to go in the wilderness alone. Jesus himself went into the wilderness alone. In my church, I'll end with this. This is an old Dr. Joseph Webb. He was a pharmacist. That's one of the reasons I became a pharmacist. And he's a singing this song. There are days I like to be. I understand it. All alone. With Christ my Lord. It's an old anthem. I tell him all my troubles. All alone. There are days I like to be. All alone with Christ my Lord. I, I didn't understand that at the time. Now I understand it. I understand it. I understand it. So you really bell off alone. You get about three, four people. They want to go here. Look, we want to go to this restaurant. No, I don't like that restaurant. So now I got to satisfy you. Then I got to satisfy the other person. My God, man. Hold on. When, when we go? But if I just go by myself now, I can stand up. Stand on your feet. Bless you, Lord God. Father, we are coming, we, we keep coming to this place and you're training us. You're, you're giving us wisdom well beyond our age. We have 20-somethings and 30-somethings, but they are hearing the word and they are taking it in. They know they don't know and they are trying to gain wisdom now. Lord, I thank you that you're not preparing us for where we are, but you're preparing us for where we're surely to go. We don't need to pay attention we need to just learn the lesson in the promised land. I mean, excuse me, in the wilderness. We just need to learn the lesson. I don't, I don't, I'm not going to live here. I'm on my way somewhere. I'm on my way somewhere. I can take, I can take what I got to go through because I'm not going to be here forever. Whatever I need to learn, God, whatever I need to, let me, teach me now. So when I get there, when I get there, when I arrive, He got them out of Egypt, but then he had to get Egypt out of them. That's what God is doing right now in, a, in many of our lives. The way he used to provide for you is over. Hallelujah. The struggle is over. <laughs> Hallelujah. How am I going to make it? I don't know. Just all this stuff is over. That, that, that is over. Glory is over. It's over. It's over. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Some, some kind of way back into the He made it work. He made it work. But now he said, that, that that's over. That's over. You've already been through that. You'll never, you'll, 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 you won't have to go through that anymore. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Father, your word has gone forth in this place. There may be somebody here today that don't know Jesus. I'll tell you right now, it's dark. It's empty. 
when you don't know him. But I want to invite you today to receive Jesus Christ. Every dark area in your life can turn to light. Instead of death, you're going to begin to live. I'm talking about a joy that words can't really explain. For whom the Son has set free is free indeed. Things that, you, that, that make you happy now, well, I got to do this to, in order to be happy. He'll give you a high you don't have to pay for. You don't have to go to the drug house for. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You won't have to chase that first fix. You won't have to chase it. He'll give you joy unspeakable and full of glory. If you want to be free today, I invite you to come to the altar. We'd like to pray for you. Hallelujah. You can still be free. I don't care what you've done. I don't care what has taken place. You, whom the Son has set free is free, is free, is free, is free, is free. Now, there's somebody here. There's something you need to lay on the altar. You're trying to carry it. You're trying to deal with it. You need to lay it on the altar. And you need to leave it there. You're not going to worry yourself going into the Thanksgiving season. You're not going to worry yourself going into the, the uh, Christmas season. Neither, neither are you going to worry yourself going into a new year. Today. Today. We're going to leave it at the altar. Glory to God. I don't care what it is. It's not that important. Have you up half the night? Have you? Oh, no, no. God, God, my God, my God, my God, my God shall supply all of your needs. I don't care what the need is. All of them. According to his riches and glory. Anybody need to be filled with the Holy Ghost today? Will you please come? Anybody need a church home? We invite you to come today. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. The altar is open right now. He's a mighty good God. Mighty, mighty good God. Oh, the demons, they upset him now. Oh, my God. Thank you for the blood. Thank you for the blood. Thank you for the blood. Hallelujah. Is there anybody else who need to come to this altar? Just, just come on, step out. Just step out today. It's such a freedom in this house. Bless you, Lord God. Glory, 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 glory. Thank you, Lord. There are some people at this altar today, God, they just need to leave something. They've been carrying it. and The devil has convinced them that they're going to have to carry it until it's resolved. But we have found out this morning that we can leave it, that weight. Mm. Hallelujah. We are releasing it on this altar. We're giving it to God right now. We're making an exchange right now. You don't have to carry it no more. You don't have to worry about it no more. Hallelujah. I trust God. And at this altar, we release it right now in the name of Jesus. That weight that was on your shoulders 
and the burden shall be removed off of your shoulders and the yoke from off your neck and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. Right now, right here, right now, we release it. We drop it right here at the altar. We're not carrying this no more. The weight, the weight, the weight is gone. The weight is gone. The weight, the weight. I believe God can do it. And I trust him fully now. I'm not going to try to fix it no more. I'm leaving it here at the altar. I'm leaving it right now, right now, right here, right now. And I will not fish it back. My God is able. Hallelujah. God got it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Something trying to come up in my mind, I'm going to tell myself God got it. Hallelujah. I left it at the altar in a real church. Hallelujah. Is there no balm in Gilead? Is there no great physician? Hallelujah. You know what these other people stand in need of, Father. I pray you give them what they need. I pray you use these ministers that may minister to some. We give you glory right now, Father. It's just time to be free. When Lazarus came out that tomb, Jesus said, Loose him and let him go. And you had to make up your mind today whether you're going to keep going around wearing it up one day, down the next, or whether you're going to be free. I'm not going to wait to get to heaven to be free. I'm going to be free right here, right now, right here, right now. I'm going to be free. Wounded for my transgression, bruised for my iniquities. The chastisement of my peace was upon him and with his stripes. I am healed. No, no, I'm not going to wait to get to heaven to have peace. I'm going to have peace right now, right now, right now. I'm going to enjoy this life. I ain't worrying myself. Oh, no. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something. Them little imps come around trying to torment you. I want you to start pleading the blood of Jesus. I want you to go and stop, the blood, just the blood, just, just, I, they'll get it, they'll get out quick and fast. You start firing the blood, the blood of Jesus, the blood, I plead the blood, huh? hallelujah, the blood that Jesus shed, that blood when they, when, 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 when they put, when they put that crown on his head, that blood, that blood right there, that, that blood that when they pierced him in the side and blood and water flow, the blood in his wrist, the blood that was in his feet. That, that's the blood I'm pleading. You go through that rendition, every demon will fly. They are leave so fast, they cannot stand the blood, the blood, the blood, the blood. Not of a bullock, not of a some other animal, but of the Lamb of God, slain from the foundation of the world. So we bless you now, Father. In Jesus' name, amen, hallelujah. You all saw. And I prayed the prayer of us leaving something at the altar. If you need any further assistance, you can follow them. Any other uh, things that you came for, please go in the back so we can minister to you. Praise God. Glory to God. I used to, you know, there's some people, they can, oh, he always bragging. I'm going to keep on doing it. I'm going to keep on bragging on God. I was thinking the other day, my, my, my view, if I have a view from the home, 
where I used to live at in Richmond was a graveyard. And now I have a lake. Ain't that God? Ain't that just like God? That would take you from, I mean, just, it just, just didn't have much. And then, and then, I mean, for God to put us where we are right now. It's a blessing, man. Glory to God. Praise the name of the Lord. You can be seated. We're going to bless God now with our tithes and offerings. You know, and, 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 and the, I'm going to tell you so you can see how God got us where we are. We didn't have much, but then we wanted to give. We got turned on to uh, giving tithes and offerings and seeds. And now money never rests around us. You know what I mean? We, we, we just got, we got that thing of giving, man. That thing was on us. We want to do it. Tithes and offerings. Then we started seed sowing. And now money won't rest around us. It's always moving in our direction. Always is moving. Money, money get nervous every time any one of us show up. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. My goodness. Hallelujah. Y'all been doing pretty good at the gas pump? You know, you, let, you just start filling it up. Say, well, praise God. 60, 50, 60, 70, whatever. Just, you know, when you get, if you get all the way down to the bottom of the tank and, and you just like, praise God. You, I hope you ain't out there swear, oh my God, how much more is going to be? No, you've been taught better than that. You just pray. Thank God you, got, you have the finances to do it. Amen. Amen. You know, it's something about money. When money knows that you are its master, it will, be, it will, it will behave around you. Did y'all hear what I just said? When it knows that you are its master, it'll behave when you, when you, when you, when you speak something, you say something, Money, money, so moving, man, so moving. You know, I was thinking about this the other day. You can get to a place, you listening? You can have some money set aside, but you can get to a place in faith and your maturity in the area of finances that you can say, well, I'm going to go do that, but I'm not going to use this to do it. <laughs> I'm going to call it in with my faith. I'm not going to have to touch that over there to do it. I'm going to still do it and still have that. Oh, Lord. Did, did I lose two or three of y'all? No, oh, you can get to that place. Well, I got some stuff set aside over here. But you, you I mean, but you got to be flowing in faith now. You got to be like, man, I feel, man, I'm, a, man, I'm in a flow here now. You know what I mean? It's one of those faith flows like um, I was preaching several months ago. When, when they get hot on the basketball court, when they get hot, they release it. Don't even look. They know it's going in. They release it, start going down the other end. Look, I mean, they know it's going in. When, when, when you get to that position in your faith and, uh, and you feeling it now, you're like, oh, man, I'm, I don't even, man, I got that. I got that set aside. But I, you know what? I'm not even going to use that. Y'all, you stay over there. Let me go use my faith. Let me start speaking to some things. Let me start calling those things that are not as though they were. And you can bring in whatever you need to do that new thing, and then the money's still sitting over there. So, the, so the, well, I don't want to deplete my savings trying to do this. You don't have to. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Now, now, sometimes, you know, now the enemy is going to try to remind you you got something in savings. He ain't say nothing about my money before. Now I'm trying to go for this thing. Now he's trying to tell me the only way I can get it if I deplete this. But I can go get it and don't have to touch it. <laughs> New money. Glory to God. <laughs> Come on, y'all. I'm trying to help y'all best I can. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, I got something else. You know, Pop Pastor wrote a book, Money with a Mission. See? No, it, it, here, this, this is the purpose for this flowing in. I need this done. 
Glory to God. Hallelujah. Now, if I didn't have no evidence in my life, I wouldn't listen to me either. But, but because I do, you, you, you might want to listen. Now, we got many listening. They don't, they don't want me to know they listen, but I, I, amen. Glory to God. But they got to make an exchange. You got to do something now for the thing to come up on you. You got to make an exchange. <clears throat> Y'all ready? Let's lift our seats before the Lord. Oh, my God. Let me, I need to pray something. Man, let me just. My God. I'm hearing two things that won't be long now. The other thing I'm hearing, you're almost there. These two things I just said to you pertain to your finances. If the enemy has told you lately it's not working, it's because it is. He's a liar. The anointing that's on Mount Gilead you have a right to it. The financial favor that's on this ministry is on your house. Don't try to be regular when you are under this anointing. Expect it. Expect it. Expect it. You have a right to it. You sow into it. Mm. Don't expect to be normal. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Anybody got a reason, a reason to dance? Anybody got a reason, a reason to dance? Anybody got a, a reason to dance? Anybody got a, hey, hey. He became sin, who knew no sin, hey. that we might become his righteousness. His body was broken. Transgression, but I'm so glad. I'm so glad that's not where the story ends. The lamb that was slain, the lamb that was slain that day, rose in victory. Since that day, sin has lost its grip on me. Hallelujah. Say, Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Well, you may be seated, Mount Gilead News. Welcome to Mount Gilead News. I'm Pastor Madrine Kingwa. And I'm Minister Phyllis Mitchell. We are proud graduates of the Mentoring You Encounter with our very own co-pastor, Elena Robertson. If you have never participated in this mentorship journey, here is more. Ladies, the Mentor in You is a journey. The Mentor in You is rewarding. The Mentor in You is a 12-month life skills training encounter led by our very own visionary co-pastor Elena Robertson since 2012. You will experience spiritual growth. You will develop a special bond with other ladies right here at Mount Gilead. You will dive deeper into the Word and other resources. Your life will change. I should know because I'm an alum. I'm an alum. I'm an alum. I am an alum of the Mentor in You Encounter. I'm Lady Ann Francis, the overseer of our Mentor in You Encounter. If you desire to uncover the hidden treasures within through mentorship, MIY is for you. So what are you waiting for? Apply today. Ladies, to submit your application, click on the MIY web banner on our church website. We want to wish you a wonderful Thanksgiving in observance of the holiday, the church campus will close at 1 p.m. on Tuesday, November 23rd. There is no midweek service this week. The campus will reopen for worship service on Sunday, November 28th. If you ordered a Thanksgiving meal from the Gourmet Grill, please prepare to pick up your items in the grad concourse on the date and time you selected on the order form. Oh, I'm so excited. Our very own man of God, our bishop, has a birthday coming up on Saturday, December 4th. We honor him on Sunday, December 5th. Take time now to pray for your very best seed. Finally, please note our Transformation Institute on Demand courses will now launch in the spring of 2022. Stay tuned for details on the exciting new opportunity. For a full list of announcements, head to the announcements page on our church website, mongiliadfgim.org. Will you stand on your feet at this time? Father, we are truly, truly grateful as we go into this Thanksgiving season, so much to be thankful for. You're training us. You, we didn't even know how bad off we were until you started training us and things had to, that had to be removed from our lives. Lord, we didn't, know it, we didn't know all that you had in mind when you told us to come to this place. Well, we want to thank you because you know exactly what you're doing. We bless your name, God. Sometimes we look at ourselves and say, Lord, why, why, you know, I didn't know you had all of this for me, but God, thank you for seeing in us what we couldn't see in ourselves. And thank you for putting us around people, mentors, that can help, that can help coach the best out of us. So, Father, we just love you today. We thank you. We have so much. And, Lord, as we reflect even on Thanksgiving, we're we going to sit down for a while and just look back at all you've done for us. Not only this year, you've been a mighty, mighty good father, a mighty good father. And so we love you, Father. And we, 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 we just we give you all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor. In Jesus' name, amen. Mount Gilead family, we all know the power of connection, so connect to our bishop. The covenant partners of Daniel Robertson Ministries are truly making an impact around the world. You may remember Bishop shared in September that their seeds covered two blessings in Kenya. They were able to provide flooring for a church. They were also able to purchase solar panels to power water to a village that did not have a water supply. So they are truly making a difference. If you want to connect and become a covenant, partner, go to bishoprobertson.tv 